things. And now she finds herself deep in a famine with her bed empty, her arms empty, her barrels empty, and her hopes and dreams are empty. Have you ever been in a place where you looked and everything just seemed empty? Her bed is empty. Her fa- Everything, her arms are empty. She, we don't know. She may have had a husband before, but we find a woman, a woman that has not, the text does not even give us her name, but the text identifies her by her condition uh, instead of the name that she was given. Ah, somebody under the sound of my voice, you've been in some stuff so long uh, that you may have even forgotten who you are. uh, That you may have forgotten what God has called you uh, and what God has promised over your life. But let me remind you uh, that you are the head and not the tail. uh, That you are above and not beneath. That you are the lender and not the bar. You're saying, preacher, that sounds good, but you don't know my situation. But I, I may not know your situation but I know that the Bible says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken I know that the word of God declares that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think and if that doesn't help you he also said that all things work together for the good of those are called according to his what purpose and so he never promised that every situation would be good but it would work out for my good let me prophesy to somebody you're in a desert place and everything around you is barren but let me prophesy and give you a prophetic word tonight it's happening for your good baby something good is going to come out of it and God is going to amen bless you beyond measures her bed is empty Her arms are empty. Her barrels are empty. Her hopes and dreams are empty. She no longer is identified by her name, but by her condition. How many times has society tried to put a label on you? How many times have people tried to give you a name that was less than a child of God? Uh, And I want to let you know something that my grandmother told me a long time ago. Baby, it doesn't matter what they call you. All that matters is what your answer to. Uh, And some of y'all, y'all been answering to the wrong name. Uh, And you need to get a revelation tonight in your desert place uh, to remind you of who God says you are. And to make matters worse, it's not just her, but her offspring with her. She finds the fruit of her womb with her and sees no way out. Have you ever felt trapped? Have you ever felt in a place that no matter how hard you work, it still wasn't enough? Have you ever found yourself where you prayed, where you just couldn't pray no more? Have you ever found yourself in a place where, you know what, you're fasted and you're saying, God, ain't nothing happening, but all that's happening is, is that I'm just hungry? Because you, you're, the, the trial that you're going through is so great that you cannot seem to see the other side. This woman has been blinded by the issues of life. Uh, and because of her socioeconomic status, uh, it has hindered her from progressing forward in life. She's, this, she's not just fighting herself, uh, but she's fighting a system that has been put in place uh, to keep her in a place of bondage. Uh, She's fighting a system that was put in place uh, so that she would never succeed. She's fighting a system that has been put in place uh, that made sure that she would never achieve her dreams and her goals. Uh, Can you imagine her in this desert place? Uh, This woman may have one day dreamt of being somebody's wife. Uh, She may have dreamt one day of being somebody great, somebody affluent, uh, but not because of her doing, but because a system, uh, a demonic system that was put in place. Uh, she finds herself in a place of low bar, but I don't care how low you are. God can reach way, way down and pick you up. And so now it's in her low place that she's presented with an opportunity. She's presented with an opportunity. Somebody shout an opportunity. Let me say this. Some of you, you've been praying to God in the last couple of weeks. You've been praying, God, get me out of here. God, I want you to bless me. God, I want you to do this for me. And can I tell you, God himself is not going to bring you out of the situation. But what God will do, he won't just deliver you out of the situation, but he'll present you with an opportunity that will be able to bring you out of the state that you're in. And the question is, will you seize the moment. 
Ah, she finds herself with an opportunity. The prophet Elijah comes to her and he says to her, he says, woman, he says, this is what I need you to do. He said, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may drink, so that I may drink, have a drink. And as he was going to get, as she was going to get the water, he said, and please bring me a piece of bread. So here steps Elijah in verse 12, the man of God that God sends to her door. He asked for a piece of bread. Now, this, what he asked for is now opportunity. See, you have to recognize in this season what opportunity looks like. Because what you think may be an opportunity, it may not be the opportunity, but God will reveal himself in some unconditional ways. He'll present himself in some ways that you would never think that God will present himself to you. See, somebody, oh, oh God, I don't want to, I don't, I, I'm on a time limit, but I would stay there. But an opportunity is presented to her. This is her now moment. This is the moment uh, that will define her plans, uh, her purpose, and her destiny. Uh, God presents her with her with her moment. This is a place that demands her attention, uh, demands her decisions, uh, and causes her to take actions. Uh, no one can make this decision for you. Uh, you have to choose to rise to the occasion. Uh, your moment, your now moment is just for you. Elijah represents God in this text and he presents her with an opportunity she really doesn't understand. And she, he says, as surely as, how do we know she didn't understand it? Because in verse 12, uh, after verse 12, she says, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour and a jar, and a jar and a little oil in a jug. She says, listen, man, I was okay when you asked me for some water. I could go and get you some water. That's no problem. But now you're asking for bread. Now, see, the thing was in a famine, bread was made out of a grain. And because there was a famine in the land, there was no rain. And if there's no rain, there's no crops. And so guess what? I can get you some water, but you know what? You're asking me to get you some bread. I got my own plans. I got my own agenda. You asking me for some bread, but see what my plans were. My plans were to, you know what, take the little bit of bread that I do have, break it apart and give it to my son and I so that we can die and you know what she this is the moment that she's presented with and in the middle of all her moments she says I don't have it how many times in this church or in any position that you've been in that you that that you saying you know what all I got is five dollars to my name and then the preacher gets up and say you know what I need you to give all I need you to give whatever you have in your pockets and I need you to sow. Have you ever been in that position before, or have you ever been in a position where you're where you're battling paying a bill or paying your tithes? I want to tell you that's a moment. And what you do in that moment decides how far you can go in God. What you do in though in moments like that defines your integrity. It defines your depth. It, de it defines, I mean, all that you are in that one moment. God presents us with moments like that, amen, and it's uh, this opportunity for us to go deeper or to stay at the level that we are. She says, as surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little jug of oil. Now the thing was uh, that when I looked at this flower, this flower perplexed me because you know what she says, all I got is some flour and a jug of oil. That's all she has. And so now she, all she has is flour. Now can I ask you a question? What can you do with flour by itself? Flour is good for nothing by itself. You can't cook with it by itself. You can't, you, you know, you can't do, I wish I had some flour in my hand. You can't do anything with flour. You can't eat it. You can't drink it. You can't, you know, you, flour by itself. Oh, and the Lord said this to me, Robert, it wasn't about what she had, but flour represented opportunity. Flour, the flour represented potential. This is what the flour represented. So basically what she's saying, she said, preacher, you know what, prophet, I know what you asked me for, 
but all I have is a little bit of potential uh, and I have a little bit of oil. Now the oil represents the anointing. Uh, it represents the power of God. So she's saying, you know what, you asking me for some stuff, but all I have is a little potential uh, and a little bit of oil. All I have is a maybe uh, and a little bit of a prayer life. All I have is, you know what, a little bit of potential and a little bit of fasting. All I have is a little bit of this and a little bit of, you know, singing on the praise team. That's all I have. And now, you know what, in this moment, God can take the, God takes, God can take the little bit, the potential of what you have. The old folks used to say it like this. The, when you take little and put it in the master's hands, it becomes much. And so all she has is potential. And somebody tonight, God has been beckoning you to come closer to him. God has been calling you into prayer. God has been calling you. God has presented you with a moment. And your response to God is, God, I don't have it all together. God, I, I can't speak like that. God, I don't have the education. God, I don't have the know-how. God, I don't have the resources. And can I tell you, God does not care about what you do or what you don't have. But if you can just present him with your potential. If you can just present him with the little bit that you have, uh, he can do far much more with the little bit potential that you have. Uh, if you had all the ingredients alone, uh, somebody say, give God your potential. Uh, give God your potential. Uh, all she has is a handful of flour and jugs. She knows uh, he's a man of God, and now it's time uh, for attention and a decision and an action needs to be made in this text. Uh, there is no room to put it all for tomorrow and no time time for procrastination. Uh, despite her feelings and the setting aside what she thinks uh, and sitting on her anxiety according to verse 16, 15, she becomes obedient not because of her faith uh, but because of the word of the Lord. Uh, I want to tell somebody today you may not understand everything that's going on uh, and everything that God has said to you uh, but in this season you just need to do it because God said so. Ah, uh, some things you don't have to know on your own. You just need to move, but because God said so. Uh, I believe I'm talking to somebody under the sound of my voice. God has told you to start a business, uh, and you're saying, I don't have it. Uh, and you're saying, why should I do it? Uh, and I want to submit to you because he said so. Uh, somebody, God has called you to step out into ministry, uh, and you're given all the list of what it should have could is and what you don't have. Uh, and you need to do it because God said so. Uh, sometimes, even, you know what, those who are parents, uh, you know that sometimes, you tell your children uh, to do something and they come to you and they ask you why you asked me to do it and what you tell them why you tell them because I said so because you have insight uh, that they don't see you have some wisdom you've been where they are and you can speak from a place of experience uh, and tell them baby you just need to do this uh, because I said so uh, I believe I'm talking to somebody under the sound of my voice uh, that's about to move in all that God has called you to be uh, not because you understand it but just because he said so uh, I want to talk to a generation of believers uh, that are going to move out on faith because it said so. Uh, that you're starting a business because it said so. Uh, that you're going back to school because he said so. Uh, that you're trusting God in your, your life uh, because he said so. Uh, that you're launching out into your purpose uh, because he said so. Uh, somebody shout because he said so. Uh, I'm going to move into all that he's called me to be. Uh, I may not understand it uh, but if God said it why do I move because he said so. Uh, because I know that he's a man that he shall not lie uh, and that he could that the word that he sent will not return back unto him void. So if he said it about me, guess what? It has no condition but to come to pass. I want to let you know whatever God has said over your life, it's about to come to pass. I don't care what life has thrown your way. It's not a problem, but now it's an opportunity. Somebody needs to look at your situation differently. You looked at it as a problem before you got here, but now I want to shift your perspective and now you're looking at the glass instead of half empty uh, you're looking at it half full uh, and so now yeah I know you got a little bit money uh, but baby this is opportunity uh, baby I know I got a little bit of this but it's a little bit it's a little bit but it's opportunity uh, and I will sow it I will do what God said uh, because I'm not because I understand not because I have the answers uh, but because he said so uh, and if he said so I know I won't fail Oh, because he said so. Because he said so. 
She chooses to step into the moment because it said so. Sometimes we don't understand our circumstances, but God is asking for us to trust him, to believe him, to honor him, and to sow into him. Why is that? Why did he ask for the little, you know what? Spiritual promotion comes. Spiritual promo- This is how you know you're about to be promoted spiritually. Because God begins to ask for, for the very things that you feel that you're entitled to. How do you know God is trying to take you into a deeper level? Because he'll ask you for the very thing that you feel like you worked hard for. Because until you're willing to give up what you think belongs to you, until you're ready to give up the thing that you worked hard for, God can't bless you because God wants to see if you're really all in. See, some of my people want to be anointed, but it's a price to pay to be anointed. It's a price to pay for the oil. And so he asked for the very last thing. And let me just tell you this. God doesn't ask for your last because he needs it. God asks for your last because he wants to see if you're going to trust him to supply you with more this is how you know spiritual promotion is coming because God asked for the very thing that you feel like you're entitled to question what is God asking for what is God asking of you in this hour what is he asking of you what has he been asking you to give to him who he ha- oh, God, I don't want to get in trouble. Who has he been asking you to give to him and to give up? Let the church say amen. amen. To trust him. She wants him to trust him. God knows what she had intended for the oil and for the bread. But now this opportunity calls her to pay attention. Why? Because when the, your moment comes, circumstance will always try to speak louder than the opportunity that's being presented. I'm going to say that again. Why? Because when your moment comes, circumstance will always try to speak louder than the opportunity that's being presented to you. And that causes you to make a decision. Some of us are still trying to live on both sides of the fence. The Bible declared that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. God is causing us to take action in this hour. I'm reminded of Esther. Esther, if you don't speak up, somebody else will. But you and your people will surely perish. So many people are asking, where do leaders come from? Are leaders born or are leaders developed? And you know what? I'm a firm believer of whether leaders are formed or developed. Sometimes desperate times calls for desperate measures. And sometimes a moment demands a voice. And you know what? You may not feel like you have the education. You may not feel like you have the schooling. But sometimes God will put you in a a situation and present you with an opportunity and cause you to be the solution to the problem. What problem has God called you to be the solution to? And nine times out of ten, the very thing that you're trying to run away from is the very thing that God has called you to. She said, I'm just going to eat my whole cake and die. That's what she said. And she said, when the man of God asked for the little bit that she had, she started giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Seize the moment. Take action. The Bible declared that faith without works is what? If you are in the same place you were 10 years ago, you've missed your moment. Does God forgive us? Yes. Does God heal us? Yes. But you can do yourself a favor. Don't allow yourself to miss another moment. Don't let another moment pass you by. Bye. I wish I had somebody said, you know what, I got some woulda, shoulda, couldas, but I'm making up in my mind today that I won't let another moment pass me by. And God has obviously presented us with a moment, our moment right now. In-